Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to take a look at the Unity UT8805V. This is a 200,000 count, four and a half digit bench top multimeter, but it is really a lot more than that. This thing is like a total data acquisition center. It, so many features, we're not going to be able to cover them all in a video, and I'm sure I'd miss some anyway. So this video, or yeah, this is going to be part one of a two-part video on this. There's just so much to cover, but all right, let me slow this down here a little bit so we can actually see what's going on, and we can talk about this a little bit better. Let's start with the four and a half inch uh, full color LCD interface, which is gorgeous. I mean, look at the size of those numbers. Those numbers are get in here about a half inch tall. Those are some big numbers. So up here in the corner is our selectors telling us what we're measuring, and those can all be set over here. We'll get to that in a minute. This is our range. It is on auto two volt range. We have a trigger, our auto trigger, and then our speed is selected there. Down here, you can see we can change with the function buttons. Our range, we're in auto right now. Our speed, slow, medium, and fast. That's how many samples per second, and it is super fast. Our input impedance, 10 meg, auto, 10 meg. And relativity, no, that doesn't uh, turn off Einstein. It just takes out the, uh, the your beginning measurement so you can measure the difference in things. And then, ooh, this feature, history. See, it's telling us what we got here. Measurement DC volts, our range, how many records is kept, our maximum, our uh, minimum, our standard deviation. Then we can come in here and see all of them. All the all, all the measurements. It's got all the measurements, right? Look at that. You can update. So it updates all of our measurements there. Very cool. Very cool. Now, let's move over and talk about the controls. So up here, you have these nice soft buttons. There, there's no click to them, so they're just real soft. Where you select all the different measurements. If you're looking here, you see uh, voltage, and then above it is current in the light gray. So to get to that, you just come down here and you press the shift key. No problem. So we have our DC voltage, DC current. AC voltage, AC current. Resistance to wire or four wire. We have capacitance, temperature, uh, continuity, diode, and then frequency versus period. Now down here we have some other menus, dual and utility, acquire and help, and then our save and our math. And this thing has some incredible, incredible math functions for it. So this meter comes with a one-year CAL certificate. And uh, it's, it's quite accurate. So we're not going to go through a bunch of accuracy readings. We'll, but I will talk about some of the different measurements it makes. So. Right now, we're looking at just a plain old DC voltage measurement. So like there's 12 volts. There's 24 volts. Yeah, no big deal, right? Okay, so what I want to show you now is some of the different ways that you can take a look at these measurements. Okay, so this uh, 8805 has many ways that you can view your measurements. So if I hit map, and we come down here and you see display, well, right now we are on number. If I do trend, it is now going to give us a live graph of how these numbers are trending and and they're pretty solid so there's there's not gonna be much to see here let me make a little change and we'll see what it does maybe we'll see something come out there Uh, 
All right, well, while that's doing that, another way that we can uh, see what's going on here is with a simple bar graph, which is fantastic. A bar graph is always great if you have fast changing numbers. Like, uh, for instance, if something was oscillating, you know, a bar graph will give you a good look at that. And then we also have the histogram, which is really nice especially if you put on the accumulate what it's doing is it's simply plotting points on these graphs up here and then it will fill them up quite nicely now remember i told you this was more than just a multimeter it is a data acquisition instrument and if you look over here you can see i plugged the u disk or a thumb drive into there and what i can do now is I can save my measurements. So you can see here, you can not only save measurements, you can save your system configuration, your measurements, or a shot of the screen. All oh, awesome thing. So if we come down here, do we want to save our measurements? We can just say, save data one. I'm not going to put a different name in there, but you can do that. Done return return yeah, there all right so just for fun let me uh, disconnect the probes here and I will show you some of the other measurements and what are the different things that can be done with it are all right I have got a uh, 50 ohm resistor here I'll put on that and we will do a two wire resistor measurement very nice now so what you say right it does resistor measurements well here's where it's going to get really cool let us say for instance that you have a selection of said resistors and you want to see how they differ from one another well, what we can do is we can say relativity on and now how does our first resistor differ from this resistor well it's off by 0.33 ohms and you can go through your entire batch of resistors and find out how they all differentiate from the first one or how they differentiate from each other like if for instance you needed to find a match pair of resistors all right so we can check capacitors as well and it's pretty quick you know the handheld multimeters are kind of slow on capacitors but these ones are just a little bit quicker. Oops. Turn my relativity off. And then we'll let it read. There we go. 220. Okay, now we're looking at the temperature reading here. And I'm just using the standard K-type thermocouple, you know. Kind of we all have laying around. But what if you don't have a standard K-type thermocouple laying around? What if... You have a different type of temperature probe. Well, here's your main uh, your main reading. We can come down here to probe setting. Probe, in my take case, like I said, it is a thermocouple. But we can do an RTD. We can do thermistors. We can do thermocouples. What if you don't have a type K thermocouple? Well, what type do you have? Because it's got you covered here on the unity how cool is that now those graphs that we got with the uh, voltage reading we can do that here as well where we can take a look at the trend scale on the temperature now I'm <laughs> I'm talking directly to the probe like a microphone so it's gonna get some of my breath on it and it's going to get a little higher 
what we can do is we can say scale and now you are getting a better graph of the temperature now imagine that in your lab you want to you know check the temperature your junction temperature of your MOSFETs you can look at it like this you can look at it as a bar chart and as the histogram which is really nice put our cumulative on there and you can see where the uh, the trend starts to go very nice we have our scale we can scale it however we want go back to our, our number view again here and of course we have stats on and off now we have our minimum our average our maximum our span our standard deviation how many samples this done I mean come on this is an entire laboratory worth of measurements right here using a k-type thermocouple I mean, that's incredible value here. Okay, now we are looking at the frequency counter function. How's that for a nice bright frequency counter? I tell you what, it would be great, you know, using this type of frequency counter you're working on, say, um, Arduino type things or Raspberry Pi, or just your basic benchtop electronic. Cause, uh, it's fantastic. It's even good. It's even going to be good in audio frequencies. Uh, let's see here. I got this set for 60 kilohertz. This is a sine wave. Let me take this up here. So now we are at 1 megahertz. Two. Yeah, it craps out right at about 1 megahertz. So you're good up to a megahertz, which will take you well through audio frequencies, unfortunately. It's not going to do you much good in uh, radio frequencies, but there's another tool for that called a spectrum analyzer. So don't worry about that. Now, we can do the same thing with our frequency display. We have number. We can do a trend. What I'm doing here, I'll just turn the frequency down now. We are at a half a meg. So you can see the trend there. The bar graph as well. Help taking the frequency back up a little bit. You can see the graph change. And the graph change is quite fast, which is really nice. Then we have our histogram function. I'll play with the frequency a little bit here so it changes and you can see it. How cool is that? And of course, you know, we have the scale, we have that, we have cursor. Cursor off, that would be the line. But yeah, I mean, it's fantastic telling you all our frequencies, where the points fall. And again, all of this stuff can just be saved. You know, save our measurement. Save. We'll call this one data. Boom. So here we are in a frequency mode, and we can hit the shift button and get the reciprocal, which is the period. And we'll come back out of there. Shift. Oh, I'm putting it right back into there. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick a more reasonable frequency. Say... 100 kilohertz and let's throw some different waveforms at it how about that so we've been hitting it with a sine wave let's see what it thinks about a square wave because um, if you've done any like signal integrity work you're gonna know about the crest error so by not putting in a sine wave we're gonna introduce some crest error if you guys would like to know more about that let me know we can do a video about it. 
So, all right, 100 kilohertz square wave, not a problem. Uh, triangle wave. Yeah, no worries at all. It's doing great. Like I said, this is just a rock solid piece of good test gear. And, I mean, we've only hit on some of the things. There's so much more here, including a fantastic help menu that will take you through all of these. Like, say you don't know about the mathematical functions, and, you know, you're interested in it. You can get in here and get more information, configures all this stuff, tells you what everything does. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk more about the interfaces like the four wire on the front, uh, some of the things on the back, such as the Ethernet, the RS-232, and how this can be programmed to work and report back to your computer as well. Just a really, really versatile piece of gear here. So the list price on this piece of equipment is $489, which sounds like a lot. But when you consider all the things that are actually going on here, it's pretty incredible. I can even hear the continuity beep. I will put a link down below where you guys can get a hold of one of these if you're interested. And I would like to thank Unity for sending this out to us free of charge for our consideration so that I can show you guys Unity isn't just the little uh, red multimeters anymore. This is serious lab grade equipment and it's really nice. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this first look at the Unity 8805E. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, big thanks to Unity, and a big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.